Hi everyone, and uh, well, happy pre-Songkran. Songkran is tomorrow. Plan to be doing a show. I'm just trying to figure out how I can do it without getting a bucket of water thrown over me and my computer during the program. Yes, I'm dressed for the day in my ubiquitous 150 baht Songkran shirt, but uh, happy Songkran to everybody. I'll wish you all the same again tomorrow. A lot of people heading out of town, and we'll get to some of those stories. Let's uh, see what's happening with Songkran today. And Thai PBS World reporting Songkran revelers begin their journeys home from Bangkok and, of course, from other parts of Thailand. Uh, all the roads and tollways are very, very busy today. And increased road traffic is reported on the main arterial routes to northern and northeastern provinces. This was yesterday. As people begin their journeys home a day ahead of the long official Songkran holidays, which last from today until next Tuesday. And yes, the major exodus will be happening today. And at Government House yesterday, the Prime Minister, Seita Tawi Sin, presided over a merit-making ceremony ahead of the Songkran Festival by paying respects to the Brahma Shrine, attending a religious ceremony and receiving blessings from a senior monk. Meanwhile, the Bangkok Post reporting the seven dangerous days of travelling begin... So it is indeed the seven most dangerous days on Thailand's roads each year, uh, if they're not dangerous enough already. Up to you to be aware that there will be people driving home with their families. Uh, many will be drink driving, and it is more unsafe to travel over this next seven days than any other time during the year. So an important fact we should be aware of, whilst of course people are celebrating the Thai New Year. And people have started travelling up country ahead of the Songkran holiday amid concerns from road safety advocates over increases in road accidents outside the so-called seven dangerous days of travelling. The seven dangerous days started yesterday. They go until April the 17th. The highest number of people travelling during the holiday expected to be today and tomorrow for those leaving Bangkok and April 16 and 17 for those people returning. Well, it's not just Bangkok, of course, people travelling from one province to another, but a lot of people do head back to their hometowns, back to their family homes to enjoy the Thai New Year. And we'll try and bring you a little bit more about the festivities uh, during tomorrow's live program. That'll be starting from 9 till 10 a.m. Thai time. And then, of course, we'll have the, uh, the Sunday program with Mr. Steve Ross. And uh, grumpy old men, I'm sure he'll be wearing a Songkran shirt and we'll be celebrating Songkran uh, with you. As we head to this story reported in Hua Hin today, family falls victim to sophisticated accommodation scam in Hua Hin. Now, if not in Hua Hin, this is happening all over the place, particularly in popular tourist haunts. And uh, well, I'll go through the scam and you just need to be aware of it. And a family eagerly anticipating their holiday in Hua Hin were tricked into booking a non-existent luxury rental through Facebook. And Thai news outlets reporting this is a worrying trend of fraudulent schemes that prey on unsuspecting tourists. And further down there, a property under the name of CMC View Pool Villa was found on Facebook promising a lavish stay at a reasonable price. And drawn by the luxury appearance and the ability to accommodate their needs, the family proceeded to book three rooms for two nights at the total cost of 19,000 baht, which included a 4,000 baht security deposit. So that's the actual ad. It looks like it's been uh, an artist's impressions anyway. Suffice to say, this property doesn't exist. Uh, but the dream vacation quickly unravelled as they approached their destination. Despite maintaining communication with the property's admin, up to the moment of their arrival, the family was met with a desolate plot of land instead of the promised accommodation. And of course, uh, any contact with the admin was abruptly cut short when they were blocked leaving them stranded and realising they'd been scammed. Now, just a bit of background. The Thailand Consumer Council has issued a warning regarding uh, specifically the Siam View Pool Villa page uh, involved in similar scams where consumers were duped into transferring money to a bank account. And the page, initially named Tetant Sand before rebranding, utilised images from another accommodations page for misleading advertising, a tactic that's become increasingly common among scammers seeking to exploit the booming online marketplace for holiday rentals.
And in that uh, Who Are Hint Today article, a gentleman called Jared Van Dorst, his suggestion, never pay ahead, pay on the site when you arrive. Well, when he says on site, I th- he's not talking about uh, on the website, he's talking about at the actual property. And well, I mean, that is one way you can do it. Probably the only way you can really be sure is with the online uh, travel agents, uh, things like Hotel.com, uh, Agoda, Booking.com. Of course, these days you've got things like Airbnb as well, which are specific for these sort of long-term rentals. When all the payments and everything is done through the website, and you can be pretty sure that uh, they've been checked, and you can read the reviews, etc., etc. Buying a, a, a rental or pretty much buying anything off a social media page is fraught with all sorts of problems. Uh, I famously, I've mentioned it many times, uh, bought a a pair of shoes, well, two pairs of shoes on Facebook. Uh, Here I am probably four years later, and well, they're still in the postage. They haven't arrived yet. But yeah, you can easily fall for these. The pictures look great and it sounds fantastic. And you think, hmm, so it's a bit of impulse buying, but you do need to be very careful if you are going to be buying anything online, particularly if you're going to be spending, well, in this case, 19,000 baht plus plus a 4,000 baht security deposit for a property that didn't even exist. Acknowledging our sponsor, Five Star Marine at fivestarmarinephuket.com. Now today is a beautiful day. In fact, we've had spectacular, if not rather hot weather down south over the uh, the past two or three months. I'd love to be out on Pangar Bay today. Uh, you could be exploring some of those beautiful islands. Uh, just go down to the fivestarmarinephuket.com webpage and you can check out some of the photos and destinations and perhaps even make an inquiry and a booking. Let's go to our next story now. Reported in the phuketnews.com, Phuket Governor, fair visa appeal will be heard. The Phuket Governor has issued a statement confirming that an appeal will be heard on whether or not the Swiss expat Urs Fair will be allowed to stay in the country. His visa was uh, famously and very publicly revoked by the Interior Minister Anatin Chavitakun, who visited Phuket, but of course he is, uh, he does have the right of appeal. And the Governor said that the assault charge against Fair, also called David, for allegedly kicking a 26-year-old woman doctor in the back, was still being heard in court. Dr Tandau, a doctor at the Dibuk Hospital, was sitting on steps at the Yamu Beach with her friend to watch the full moon in front of Fair's rental luxury villa at Yamu Beach in Paklok. Now, Fair and his wife misunderstood, apparently, that the pair were intruding into his property, but officials later confirmed that the steps to the beach were illegally built on seaside public land. The steps were later demolished. No suggestion that uh, the Swiss man actually built the steps. In fact, they were probably built by the developer or maybe somebody else, but uh, that wasn't the point of contention. The governor said initially the Immigration Bureau had revoked Mr David's visa and we learned that there had been an appeal regarding the visa revocation. An appeal hearing will be held soon. Now there's another aspect to this story uh, covered by the Bangkok Post. Let's go there. And it says Minister warns against lobbying in Beach Bully case. And the Interior Minister, Anatin Chavitakun, has ordered the Phuket Governor not to allow lobbying in an assault case involving a Swiss man amid reports that the complainant had been approached about withdrawing her case. The Minister said, don't let the lobbying happen. Hold a press conference to confirm your stance that you will not let bribe taking happen to have the case overturned. Follow up the case closely. Now, it should be mentioned that there's a big difference between bribe taking and uh, lawyers trying to settle a case out of court. And the minister was responding to unconfirmed reports that an anonymous caller had contacted Dr Tandau to offer her money in exchange for withdrawing an assault complaint against Urs Fair, a Swiss man accused of physically attacking her. Now, it's also been reported that the uh, other two lawyers were in contact and that sort of offer was made, uh, not directly to the doctor. And Mr Anerton earlier ordered Mr Fair's visa revoked in response to the public outcry over the incident. The visa expired in March 13, but the Swiss man is allowed to remain in the country until his trial is concluded. 
two months in the news and I think we've got a few months to go yet. Let's move on to some other stories. And reported in thepatianews.com, Thai authorities launch cyber strike operation, shutting down multi-billion baht online gambling networks. And authorities launched a, an operation called Cyber Strike to shut down nine online gambling networks with a total turnover of more than 5 billion baht a year. And search warrants were sought from the criminal court in 17 different locations, including Kanchanaburi, Chumpon and Bangkok. And the owner of an online gambling website, a Mr Songsak, was captured at a residence in Chattachak in Bangkok and 29 other involved individuals were also captured across 17 locations. And there were more than 59,000 users reportedly registered and a total turnover of more than 5 billion baht annually. And the Thai Ministry of Digital Economy and Society shut down 7,600 URLs of online gambling websites from April the 1st to the 9th this year. So no, no sooner did they shut down some 7,600 URLs, online gambling sites, more pop up. It's keeping a lot of authorities very busy, but they are on the job and a lot of people losing extraordinary amounts of money with these uh, online gambling sites and the online gambling scams, of course. Now, we reported about the situation at Miawadi yesterday over the Thai border just uh, next to Masot in Myanmar. Uh, things have progressed. Let's find out the latest. And a lot of headlines right around the region, indeed around the world. Myanmar junta's defeat at border trading hub will truly test Thailand's neutrality. That was reported by the Straits Times and Reuters.com saying Myanmar troops retreat as rebels declare control over key border town. And as I mentioned, the story has been reported in many different publications around the world. An important story, particularly for Thailand. And about 200 Myanmar military personnel withdrew to a bridge to Thailand yesterday after a days-long assault by the anti-junta resistance, which declared it had won control of the critical border town of Miawadi, the latest in a string of rebel wins. And a spokesperson for Myanmar's National Unity Government said today the KNU-led Joint Resistance Forces captured the remaining military base in Miawadi. This is a crucial victory for our revolution since Miawadi is an important border town for the junta, one of the main sources of income from border trade. Thai PBS World reporting the same story. Myanmar troops withdraw from border town following clashes, according to ethnic armed group, and uh, quite a cache of weapons, guns, are proudly displayed there by the captors and the uh, Burmese army in retreat from that town. And a spokesperson for the Karen National Union said, we took Myanmar Military Battalion 275 at 10 p.m. That would have been Wednesday night and 200 or so soldiers had withdrawn to a bridge that connects Miawadi to the Thai border town of Mersot. And a Thai border official told AFP the town of Miawadi had fallen on Wednesday night, requesting anonymity as he was not authorised to talk to the media. And the border hub is vital for the cash-strapped junta, with an estimated 1.1 billion worth of trade passing through Miawadi in the past 12 months to April, according to the Myanmar Commerce Ministry. So, as I said the other day, I do get the sense that this is building up to some sort of crescendo at the moment, and uh, the conflict, really, a civil war, is continuing. This is a, a critical phase, an important border town now under the control of the resistance, and we've now got hundreds of, not just villages, but larger towns, and it looks like uh, some sort of assault now targeting the capital, Napador, which is the uh, well, central control for the Burmese army. We will keep our eyes on that particularly important story. Now, a story that I am going to cover tomorrow for the, uh, the daily program and be interested in getting your comments in it, I suppose reflects directly on Phuket, but there are a lot of other places around Thailand which are currently, well, using the terms of... Uh, this particular headline being invaded by Russian people. It's being reported in time.com, the headline, Thailand's tourist towns deal with their own Russian invasion. So as I said, we'll go into a deeper dive on this particular story. Uh, the story in time.com, 
few more interesting facts that we'll go through. Our live program from 9 till 10 a.m. tomorrow. Anybody can join in. Usually have seven or 800 people online and we always go for at least an hour, usually a bit over. But it will be Songkran, so anything could happen. And also, of course, on Sunday we'll have Grumpy Old Men. But wherever you are on the weekend, if you're in Thailand enjoying Songkran, great. Play safe, but please enjoy yourself wherever else you are in the world. Have a happy Friday, and we do hope to see you over the weekend.